Hey, what's up everybody? Matt, Comic Quarter 410 here. I have a few books to try to get through, so I'll attempt to make haste. But to start off, I want to give a big thank you to two buddies of mine who hooked me up with some awesome books. Uh, first off, I was working on a trade with KKN Comics, and he was moving, so he just went ahead and sent the books out. Mike, when you get settled in your new place, just hit me up. I definitely have some books to send you as well, buddy. He hooked me up with this copy of Deadpool number 42, G.I. Joe cover homage. I did not have this for my Deadpool run. That's a beautiful near mint copy. He hooked me up with this Thor 617 Tron variant. I'm a big fan of the two Tron movies, and this is one of the few Tron variants I was missing. I believe that's Brandon Peterson on that cover. And the last book in our trade was Giant Size Chillers, number one. First appearance of Lilith with this incredible John Romita Sr. cover. Very happy to have that, so thank you. I'm a big fan of those Giant Size Marvels. And he also threw in a couple extra books. He threw in this Underdog Whitman that I did not have. And I was really stoked to see this in here. Supernatural Thrillers, number one. Did not have it. Mike knows I'm a big fan of Jim Steranko, and it has this gorgeous Steranko cover, and it's a pretty nice copy, too, so thank you very much for that. Also, my buddy Howler Mouse was going to Heroes Con, and he asked me if I wanted to have any books signed and said to go ahead and send them out to him. I saw Scott Shaw, Captain Carrot creator on the list. I'm a big fan of his, and I've never met him, so I asked him to get my copy signed. Tim said there was a mishap and the back cover of my copy got a tape pull, so Tim went ahead and sent me his copy. You didn't have to do that, but I do appreciate it. Got it signed by Scott Shaw right there. Very happy to have that. He also took my Electra Assassin number one and got it signed by the great Bill Sankevich. Right there in red, looks gorgeous. And last but certainly not least, he took my Howard the Duck number two and got it signed by the great Frank Bruner. Really, really appreciate that, Tim. And Tim uh, threw in for free this Harlan Ellison hardcover Phoenix Without Ashes. I've never read it. Don't know much about it, but I am looking forward to read it. Reading it, rather. Excuse me. So a big thank you to Howler Mouse and KKN Comics. If you guys aren't subbed to them for some reason, definitely do yourself a favor and go check out their channels. Hit up my Polish shop. They had some great stuff in the discount bins, and they were also having a sale on their bundled sets and miniseries for 50% off. The prices were already pretty decent, so I got some great deals. Got this bundled set of military giveaways. As you can see, not for resale. At the bottom, Marvel salutes the real heroes, the men and women of the U.S. military. This is the first uh, New Avengers one they did. I already had a copy of this. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. And this set ended up being less than 50 cents a book. So that's the first one. Second one, uh, Kevin Nolan and Tom Palmer cover here. A lot of the first ones were New Avengers. This is the third one. As you can see, they all say not for resale. Uh, Avenger, New Avengers Letters Home. New Avengers Spirit of America giveaway. New Avengers Fireline. New Avengers An Army of One and... They started numbering them here for convenience, so that's the sixth one and the seventh one. Number eight, The Promise. Number nine, Hero Exchange. It's the tenth one. This is the only other one I already had. And then the next couple were Captain America ones, the first Avenger, the John Romita Jr. cover. And Captain America, the first Avenger. This is custom edition 12. Again, not for resale. So, was very, very happy to get my hands on those. They're not easy to come by, at least around here. And they were dirt cheap. Found a near mint copy of Batman 497, where Bane breaks Batman's back for a buck. Found Fables number 3 in the 50 cent bin. Could not believe that. And it's a nice copy to boot. Got Danger Girl G.I. Joe number one with this J. Scott Campbell cover that was in the dollar bin. Pretty nice copy here of What If number 13, What If Conan the Barbarian Walked the Earth Today. John Basima cover. Pretty nice copy too. 
Uh, Spider-Man Red Sonya number three. These all had Michael Turner covers. This was in the dollar bin because it does have a couple non-color breaking spine ticks, but gorgeous Michael Turner Venom cover. Found me some Steve Rude for a buck. Uh, X-Men Children of the Atom book one. This is a great, great series. Found another copy of this Wildcats number 11 Jim Lee variant, and they did connecting covers for each of the image series it's the first connecting cover variants i remember um but yeah this was a buck so i grabbed another copy it's a near mint copy found some sana takeda miss marvel's in the dollar bin i'm really becoming a big fan of her work miss marvel number 41 number 43 and 44 some more michael turner goodness in the dollar bin Wolverine Witchblade one shot. Uh, Birds of Prey 10. That's an art journey cover. That was in the 50 cent bin. And even the guys at the store said I should have pulled that and marked it up to 10 or 20 bucks. Um, JLA Justice League of Amazons number one with this great George Perez cover. It was 50 cents. Could not believe this was in the 50 cent bin. This is a Aspen Dead Man's Run uh, variant. And yeah, limited to 500 copies. It's an Arizona Comic-Con exclusive, so could not believe that was in there. Very, very limited. These were books I got for sale uh, as bundled sets. I already have this miniseries, but I believe this ended up being five bucks. So I got another set of Battle Scars. Uh, issue 1, I believe this is the first appearance of Agent Colton. Battle Scars number 2. Great Carlo Pagulian covers. Battle Scars number 3. Number 4 with Deadpool. Number 5. And number 6 for less than a buck a piece. Speaking of less than a buck a piece, here's another mini series I already have. Uh, but this set ended up being either five or six dollars and love 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 brian boland's work and this is the first time i discovered his work as a kid the camelot 3000 miniseries amazing stuff so i bought doubles of the whole set they're in great shape beautiful boland covers issue one issue two issue three four Five. This might be my favorite cover of the series, this gorgeous uh, Morgan Le Fay cover. Bolin was truly a master, still is. Issue six. Number seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. And 12. So, I was happy to get my hands on another set of those. Not going to show every issue because I believe it was close to 90 issues and then the uh, four or five annuals, but got Kurt Busiek's entire Avengers run uh, for 50 bucks. And I already had like the first eight issues, but I, I scooped this up because I've been wanting to read this for a long time. And what I read of his run with Perez is amazing. This is issue zero. Uh, regular cover to issue number one. The variant was not in there, but I already had the Sunburst variant and I got it signed years ago by George Perez. So now I have everything from this run. There's an issue two, gorgeous Perez cover where they're, you know, knights, I guess. Um, issue three, Turn of Wonder Man. Issue four, Perez in his prime. Uh, of the ones I read previously, this is my favorite storyline in this series, Ultron Unlimited, a must read. Amazing stuff, amazing art. This is issue 19. Issue 20 and 21. 
and 22. Great Perez cover there. And then we skip to, at the end, they went back to the original numbering, and they did the Avengers disassembled. Some of them had Finch covers, and this was the finale. Had this stunning Neil Adams cover. And, uh, oh, actually, there is uh, 503, probably my favorite Finch cover of the run when uh, they were doing Avengers disassembled. So, very stoked to have that full run. It's kind of cheating buying it that way, but, man, the price was right. Couldn't argue with it. Got this copy of Daredevil 150, beautiful copy of First Appearance of Paladin. I think this was 10 or 12 bucks. Wasn't leaving it there for that price. Got Betty Page number one. It's this Terry Dodson cover homage to the great Dave Stevens. I also have the Lindsner cover. It's in my box. I need to go pick it up. Found Amazing Spider-Man 493 with this J. Scott Campbell cover. I believe this was six or eight bucks. Uh, this... Star Wars number one variant is currently on the Marvel Diamond Retailer uh, variant sale. And my shop gave me this for a cover price and just ordered another one. It's uh, Sarah Pacelli, gorgeous cover there of Han and Leia. This came out, I think, last week. It's a 1 in 10 Terry Dotson variant to the new Astonishing X Men series. Beautiful cover. And I have been looking for this book for such a long time. Uh, when they announced, quote-unquote, Jason Momoa for the new Crow movie, which I not only think isn't the best casting idea, although I do like Momoa in Game of Thrones and Conan, I don't think he'll make a good Crow, and I don't, I'll believe that this movie's coming out when I see a trailer. They've been talking about it for two years, but the speculation sites mentioned this book in the Crow movie spec article, which I have no clue why. It's a great McFarlane cover, but... If you're buying Crow books for speculation, the books you want are Caliber Presents 1 and Caliber Crow Number 1, bottom line. Uh, but if you're a Crow fan, that's the series you want as well. But as a Crow completionist, I've been looking for this variant for a while. It's cooled off. I believe they had 10 bucks on it, and I talked them down a little bit even. So beautiful near-mint copy. Happy to get that. More books from the sale on sets. Got Catwoman. I uh, believe this ended up being like $2.50. Got number one. I believe these are uh, either Gilliam March or or uh, Manipal on the covers. I think it's Gilliam March. But uh, issue number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. And number six. So, finally get to read those. I didn't buy them when they came out. I was really stoked to get my hands on this. I think it would have been $30, but I talked to them and told them I already had uh, near-mint copies of number one. And I think it's seven is the Death of Supergirl. Had a near-mint copy of that. said, if you pull those two out to put up on the wall for sale, can you give me a better break? And, yeah, I think he gave them to me for $20. It was either 15 or 20 so this is the Crisis one I already had. Beautiful copy signed by George Perez a few years ago. And got the rest of the set from my shop. Crisis 2, all with stunning, stunning George Perez covers. Number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6. Number seven, this is the copy of Death of Supergirl I got at a sale. I believe it was back on Free Comic Book Day. This was like 12 bucks. This is a gorgeous near mint copy, though. That's why I paid 12 for it. That was half off, so it was like $24, $25 marked. This was in the set. Uh, eight, Death of the Flash. Beautiful villain cover here to Crisis 9. This is a must-read for any comic book fan. Crisis 10. Number 11, this is the only one that has some problems, some discoloration at the top on the all-white cover. And Crisis number 12, the double-sized final issue. And these were even in on the set. Um, these are published by another publisher. I'm forgetting the name, ICG up there. I forget what it stands for. But 
This is the official Crisis Index, and they also had all new George Perez covers, although not colored that greatly, but still beautiful covers. This is index number one, and the Crisis Crossover index number one also with a Perez cover. So finally have that completed. Then I got the entire set of John Carter Warlord of Mars, twenty dollars. They had forty bucks on this. Got every issue for twenty bucks. Most of the early covers are Gil Kane. This cover to number one is Gil Kane and Dave Cockrum. Doesn't get much better than that. Issue one, issue two, another Kane and Cockrum cover. I believe Kane was on it till ten or twelve. Number three. Number four, gorgeous Gil Kane cover there. Number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I believe, I think this is Rudy Nebris. I could be wrong, but uh, gorgeous, gorgeous. Deja Thoris cover and this issue has her origin in it as well. One of my favorite covers of the run. Issue 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. You had Gil Kane back on some of these. 18, 19, just stunner after stunner on these covers here, 20, 21, 22, 23, got some Ernie Chan covers here, 24, 25, 26, not sure. I know Perez did a cover or two in this run, if I'm not mistaken. Issue 27 and number 28. I might have missed it. I think he did do one or two covers. But um, got all 28 single issues. And the annuals, that's annual 1, annual 2, and annual 3 for way under a buck a piece. Can't argue with that. Last but not least, I was so stoked to grab these. Um, I don't own a whole lot of treasuries. I used to get them as a kid as Christmas gifts. They're very, very hard to keep in nice shape. Try and move this back a bit. Um, as many of you know, the interior paper is basically newspaper. And with them being Life Magazine size, bigger than magazine, I don't know how this guy kept these in this condition from the 70s this is the only one that's probably not near mint um you can sort of because of the way they're stapled you can sort of see the staples through the white cover here um but still other than that in beautiful beautiful condition the cover is bone white and i snagged these up they gave me a good deal on these and all the rest are near mint and like i said i have no idea how the guy kept them near mint but i was not leaving these behind this is the Conan the Barbarian Marvel Treasury 15 from 1977. John Basima and Ernie Chan on that beautiful cover. Marvel Treasury 19 from 1978. And these were, you know, $2 cover price in 78 was not cheap either. Um, I can't understand the condition these are in. I mean, I hope you can see that spine. It is just, looks like it's brand new off the, off the rack. And Marvel Treasury 23. Beautiful, beautiful copy. And also grab these three. Again, in immaculate condition. Super bright covers, bone white spine. No tears, no ticks. This is the 2001 A Space Odyssey adaptation from 1976. And beautiful Jack Kirby cover. Wasn't leaving that there. This one has... A bit of rolling on the top of the spine that's it um, but other than that perfect 
Marvel Treasury number 12, Howard the Duck. Needed that for my Howard the Duck run. And this is the one of, one of the ones that I got for Christmas as a kid. And again, an absolutely gorgeous copy here. The second Superman Spider-Man team up, Marvel Treasury number 28. And uh, very happy to have this one. So thank you, everybody. Always appreciate your time and appreciate you stopping by. Big thank you again to Howler Mouse and KKN Comics. Go check them out if you haven't for some reason. Everyone, take care of yourselves and enjoy your comics.